So this terrible thing has happened to you, and maybe it's a budget guitar and you think maybe it's not worth all of the money to pay someone else to fix it, and you want to know, can you do it yourself? Yes. My name is Jason. I'm an instrument maker and fixer and an independent musician. Instrumental versions of my songs are going to be playing in the background. If you're intrigued by what you're hearing, links are below. So with introductions out of the way, let's get back to the problem you're trying to solve. I would compare the difficulty of gluing this headstock back on to following the instructions from an expert chef on how to make a really good pan of scrambled eggs. Some of the details do matter, but each individual step is not difficult. The thing that you may not understand is that the way the headstock is going to break, it's going to separate on what's called long grain and a glue joint to put that long grain back together is actually very strong. You may see videos of people putting splines in to support the broken area. That's not a bad idea, but it's just not justified for a budget guitar. It can make sense if you have a very expensive instrument to get that little bit extra. But with just straight glue, you're going to be able to put it back together and it's going to play fine. So you don't need anything that I would consider to be a specialized tool. You need some proper glue and you need some clamps. And I'll put links in the description to items similar to what I'm using. Once we get the thing back together and sort of functionally playable, there may be some aesthetic details that you want to clean up. That'll actually take longer than the original glue back together. You can go as far down that path as you want, but you also don't have to go as far as I did. Let's get into it now. The very first step is to do a dry fit. You want to assess how well are the parts fitting together. And you're also practicing getting them to fit together as well as you possibly can. Now I'm going to be feeling along all of the cracks with my fingers looking for any little bumps and edges that I can move the pieces to get the fit just perfect. Now in this case, it did fit together pretty nicely. It's a good idea to not delay doing this fix or over handling the pieces. There's a lot of really fine little fibers and edges there. You want to put this together relatively soon. It's not a panic. A few days doesn't make a difference. I'm doing this about 10 days after the break happened and it works out great. So as we turn this over, you're going to see the sort of cream colored piece there is called the nut. Now on this guitar, the nut was not affected and stayed attached to the guitar. If the nut falls off your guitar when the headstock breaks, that is a bit of a can of worms. If the nut itself is not broken and the slot where it fits is in good condition once you glue everything back up, then you can just put it back on. Don't goop a bunch of glue in there though. There's enough details here that I don't want to try to cover them, nor do I want to glaze over them. So if you do have this problem, I suggest just go find some videos about replacing a nut and pay attention to the process of securing it to the guitar. So before I glue the pieces up, I'm going to clean them with an alcohol wipe. Don't use water because that will cause the wood fibers to expand, but do clean it even with a fine brush because you want to get any dust out of the way that might affect the glue. Not letting the pieces get dusty is another reason why you want to do this fix relatively quickly. So we've practiced putting it together and we've cleaned the surfaces up a little bit. We're going to put some glue on. You're just gonna mostly goop it on. You wanna cover all of the surface right down to the edge. Make sure there's enough glue to fit into all those little nooks and crannies of the wood fibers. You're gonna be able to clean it up later, no problem. Air on the side of too much. I'm gonna add glue to both sides of the break. Take your time, do it carefully the way you practice putting it back together. But also don't wait, the glue is meant to be put together quickly after it's put on and you do want to see some squeeze out, that means you've got enough in the joint. I'm just starting to lightly clamp it and see that glue squeeze out and then I'm going to clean up the excess glue. Again, this is not a panic, you can take five minutes to do this. But also be ready, have your clamps, your damp cloth all ready there. You don't want to start go looking for stuff after you've got glue in place. So at this point I'm bringing out some more clamping pressure and I'm confident I'm squeezing this into the final position where I want it to stay. 
Now this is an important warning point because you're clamping two pieces that are probably fitting together at an angle compared to how you're applying the pressure. And if you think about that, there's a chance that they may want to slip when you squeeze down. So be watching very carefully that nothing is going to slip. There's a good chance it's not going to slip at all because there's quite a bit of friction still between all of those little nooks and crannies in the wood grain. But be very mindful that you don't cause the whole thing to slip when you do the final clamp pressure. And so right here is where I've got a little bit of a clamping problem to deal with because you can see that as I press down on that, the glue is bubbling a little bit, meaning that I could definitely get those pieces to fit a little bit better. And so I need to get some clamping pressure on that spot. And it is a very tricky shape to clamp. So if I do have any specialized tool in this process, this is it. It's a big long rubber band that I use for clamping things of irregular shapes. A surgical tube would also work for this, or really anything that's got enough stretch to it to apply some pressure. The rubber band is great because the glue won't stick to it, so you can kind of apply it directly. If you need to put a barrier between the guitar and whatever you wrap around it, you can use a piece of wax paper, but if you can get something made out of rubber, that's ideal. But you definitely do want to think about how you're going to tackle this problem before you put the glue on. Because after you put on the glue, it's too late. You don't want to be coming back in an hour and trying to clamp it. You need to clamp it within a few minutes. So I'm removing my C-clamp here. That's just a judgment call. The rubber band's doing everything I need it to do and I can wrap it up tight where I need it to be. Now you don't need to crank on this so hard that you're gonna risk moving the pieces that you just fit together. Wood glue doesn't need, you know, vice-like pressure. It just needs firm pressure to do its job. And I'm just tying it off on the tuning peg here at the end. It's helpful if you can see the crack as you're doing this so that you can see that you are applying enough pressure to close it. So let it dry overnight is enough and here's the test. I'm pulling on the top of the headstock and you can see that the whole neck is moving and that joint is solid. So now we're gonna go into making it look a little better and feel a little better in your hand. So I'm making a little bit of a scraper here from a razor blade and I put some tape around it to expose just one tiny little edge right in the middle. And I'm using the scraper to get rid of any of the hardened glue that is squeezed out of that crack. So you might be thinking that, oh wow, that's gonna really scratch up the guitar badly. But for one, that's what the tape is for, to target the work that you're doing. The second thing is that the finishes on the guitar is actually pretty thick. And unless you're really careless, you do have some room that you can work this job and you're not gonna cut through that finish. We are going to buff it up a little bit later. Now when I'm working on the flat surface and I want to clean up anything, I've switched to a chisel because it has the flat back and does a really good job of picking off any of the excess that is rising above that flat surface. If you don't have a chisel, you can keep going with the razor blade. It'll work fine. Now I want to make some wood filler because there are a few little places where some slivers of wood have fallen out and were lost and I want to be able to fill that in and sort of restore the smooth surface of the guitar without any divots. So this is just sawdust made out of mahogany and I'm going to add some glue to it later. I happen to have mahogany which is the same wood that the guitar is made out of. You could use any wood you want for this job. It may not match its color as well, or you can buy a commercial wood filler that matches, it's fine. You wanna mix in enough glue so it's about the consistency of a tomato paste, maybe a little drier. It needs to be sticky. If it's a deep divot, you can't fill it all in one shot. So you're gonna to need to do some layers one day at a time. It's this tedious work that would actually cost quite a bit of money if you paid someone to fix your guitar. And that's partly because a professional is gonna be a little bit of a perfectionist. And when it's your guitar, you get to decide when it's done. 
After each layer of the fill that I put on, I use a scalpel and I scrape and I shape it and smooth it a little bit. Now you might argue that this is a little bit more high skill work, but this is just aesthetics. Do as much of this as you want to until you're satisfied. In this case, I think I did this over about four days. Each day I'm able to shape the material that hardened from yesterday and then I put on another layer to continue to build it up. This probably took me about 15 minutes each day. And again, after all of that scraping, there was nowhere I went through the original finish of the guitar. I did finally decide that the keys were in the way because when I put some finish on next, I don't want any to drip into the keys. I probably should have just taken them off at the beginning. I think ideally you would like to put some finish on, but I recognize that you may not have the right material on hand. This is a wipe on polyurethane, which has the advantage of being really easy to apply. You just take a rag and wipe it on. I don't really want to recommend other finishes because I don't use any other finishes. A lot of people like boiled linseed oil, which you would apply in a similar way, but otherwise I'm going to let you do your own research. I will say don't let uncertainty about the finish slow you down from doing the glue part. You can decide on the finish later, but as I said before, it's important to get the glue done before too long. After these kind of finishes, you should very lightly sand or buff it up a little bit. 400 grit or higher if you're using sandpaper, but if you don't have that, you can even just use like a scrubby from the kitchen. Just be careful you don't leave scratches. So here's the final look. Mostly the cost of this is the time you put into it to do the best you can. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments.